Hey everybody, Dan Strong here with Excel VBA is Fun. Today we've got a fun little project that helped me pick five random winners for a contest I threw out there. So let me show you what I was doing. So on our Microsoft Excel Ninjas Facebook group, we pose the question, which of these pictures is the best and which one should I go ahead and pay for out of these, which were my top seven images? And most of the people, spoiler alert, picked number 13 here. But there were some other votes and it was an interesting debate. So what I did is I took all the names from this entire feed and all of the reactions and all of the votes and I went ahead and threw them into an Excel file and we're using XGrid to spice things up a little bit so let's go ahead and open up that workbook here the grid random winner project and I'm gonna show you around and I'm gonna show you how everything works so the first thing that I did was I loaded up all the names as I said so I'm gonna hit alt F11 and show you what that looks like first let's click the load results button so you can see what it looks like and it has all the results in this grid here. Now I'm going to sort these for you in just a minute. We're going to see who some of the winners are. First of all, let's hit Alt F11 and see how we got those in there. So if I go to Module 1 in this particular workbook, we have one particular macro in here called Get Members. And so we're taking the grid in Sheet 1 and we're doing a bunch of things with that. And that's why I have a with and with statement to make it easier on Excel. So the first little bit, you're going to learn more about that if you get the course that we have. But essentially, we're just clearing out the last entry of the grid, all the columns. We're setting the font size and a few other sizes. Now, this is a really important part, though. I know we're getting ahead of ourselves on our YouTube series, but that's okay. So we're adding three columns. It's a very basic feature in any kind of grid. So we have to add the columns and give them each a name. So we have name, what was their vote, like what image number did they vote on, and then later we're going to have a randomizer to pick five winners who will each receive a free course from me. Now if you want to download this free workbook, just click on the link above your screen or in the video description and have at it but otherwise just follow along and I'll explain to you the rationale behind the code. This again is just giving a default item height and that's going to be useful to have an image height of 32 because we have some images that need to fit in the third column. We're allowing the sort bar to be visible because we're going to be doing some grouping, and I'll show you that in a moment. Then we have a list of names. Now, you can do this by a database. You can do it by a worksheet. I went ahead and just manually copied and pasted this and simply entered in the person's name. That's my wife. And then her vote, which is 13. And then several other people voted on image number 13. A few people uh, voted for, like, 19 or number 8. It was basically between those three. So we have the list of names, and then that's pretty much it. Once that macro runs, then voila, you have this beautiful list, which is sortable. So you can sort this. this is, there's the 13s, then the 19s are sorted together, and the 8s are sorted together. And then, of course, we can sort it the other way. So this has not been told to sort numerically. It thinks that this is supposed to sort using strings. So it's doing its best. It's actually thinking 8 is the equivalent of 80. So it starts with an 8, so then it's bigger, and then it's descending to 1, 9, and then 1, 3. So it did its best. Uh, we can change that to sort uh, numerically, but I'm not going to mess with that for right now. You can even group by the vote number, and it'll categorize everything. So let me double-click on these headers and show you. For image number 13, there was 18 votes, so that's obviously the winner. Image number 19 had 7, and then image number 8 with the black background had 2 votes. So these are all good. Uh, but obviously number 13 won. Let's take that off of the group view here. Now the second part of this is we want to assign a random winner. In fact, five of these people are going to receive a free course from ExcelVBAsFun.com from me. So let's go ahead and have it pick the winner. Now, don't get excited if your name is on this list just yet. As we are stepping through the code there might be lots of stars appearing on here but the final time we click this button that will actually announce the true winner so right now this is just testing I'm sorry if a star appears next to your name when we're simply testing it out so let's go through the macro in slow-mo I'm gonna hit alt F11 and we're gonna check out the get random results I just want to explain to you how this works 
So once again, we're talking about the grid one on sheet number one. And so once that's loaded, we're going to have column auto resize turned on so that it's kind of an auto fit feature. But what I want to explain to you first is how the images are working. So if I run this, I'm going to go ahead and spoil it. I'm going to go ahead and run it, and then we're going to explain it. So it picked five random winners by putting an image next to them using a star. Okay, These are not the true winners. We're going to announce that in a minute. I already said that. But I want to explain to you how this image got there on the grid. So if we go to Alt F11, you notice that on sheet 2, not sheet 1, but the other sheet, there is a named range I called win for winning. And that represents the star. Wow. So we have an image inside of a cell, you say? Yes, we do, but it's not what you might think. It's actually a string of text that represents the image. So later on in this YouTube series, and certainly we cover it in the full advanced grid course on ExcelVBASFun.com, we'll talk about how you can use encoded base64 strings just as we've done and how you can take a batch of images and convert them all into a lookup table. It's really easy and uh, we have some sample code that I've written for you on the course as well. But enough about that. So we take the HTML picture using the code name win that's in, you can give it any code name you want and then we're going to reference that code name win or whatever you give it later on and you can see that down here we have an image tag and then the name we gave it win and then the ending image tag so let's go to that part so we get the total number of items in the grid and then we're going to have a random counter from the random between function from 0 to whatever the item count is. And it's minus one because this is a zero base thing, so it starts with zero and not one, therefore it ends with that number minus one. So we get a random item number, and we're going to try to see if that one's already been chosen, if it already has a star in it. And if it doesn't, then we'll go ahead and use it as our first random item. If it does already have a star in it, then we will skip over it and we'll go to this try again. So the loop will go back to here until we have a number of tries equals 5. So that's how it works. Let's go ahead and step through the code so it makes a little bit better sense. I'm going to hit Windows right arrow key to make that go here. We'll load up this Alt F11 and here we're ready to step through. So let's go ahead and reset by clicking load results here and then we're going to hit Alt F11 and we're going to go ahead and step through using the F8 function key. So we're going to start off with the grid, auto resize is true, that's fine. Then we're going to grab this string of text from that sheet and put it into the HTML picture which creates a new window handler for it but we don't have to know about that. Now the items dot item count is 27 so if we hit F8 it says there's 27 items now. The number of tries is going to be zero because we haven't tried it yet. We need five tries, we need five total winners rather but we've only tried zero times and successfully had zero stars assigned. So if tries count equals 5, nope, we've only tried it 0 times. So here we go. The random item is going to be from 0 to the total items minus 1. So 0 to 26, that's the index number. So if I hit F8, looks like the first entry we're going to do is number 12. We're going to see if it's empty. If it is empty, we'll put a star on it. It's our first random winner. So now we're going to assign a window number for the item. So we're going to get the items dot item by index number, index number 12. So we're grabbing the window handler for that particular row or item, if you will. And then we're going to check the cell value for that particular one on column number 2. Remember, this is 0 base, so it's 0, 1, 2. We're checking the winner column. If it's empty, then we're going to move on. And it is empty because we don't have a star or anything in there. So look, it's empty. We're going to assign the cell value to be image of the window and I want you to see what happens since we haven't formatted that column as HTML we have to do it one at a time for this example so I'm gonna hit F8 and we can see down there if we scroll a little bit let's hit Alt F11 we can see that it has the image tags with the word window or with a closing image tag but if we format that as an HTML using XHTML there it's a star and now we've successfully used one of our tries so tries count equals tries count plus one which is going to increment it to the number one. Okay, cool. So now we're going to go to try again because we know that there's more tries to do. And here's the tries counter. So if, if this is five, 
it's not so we're not going to exit the sub the next random item is number 13 lo and behold that is actually the next item right below so we can watch it as it happens once again a window number is assigned we're checking if it's empty and then we're going to put an image make it HTML really quick and increment the tries count and we'll just do that I'm wondering if we're going to get a duplicate it looks like we got another 19 if we ran into a duplicate Let's let's do it on the on the last one. Let's make sure we run into a duplicate. So random item equals 13. How about that? We actually did get a duplicate because we had 12 and 13 a minute ago. So random item equals 13. We're going to get the handler for that. And it looks like if this one equals empty, then look, it's not empty. So we skip it. We go back the loop to try again and still haven't met the tries count equals five so we're going to get a new random item which is item number two and that one has not been used so now we're good when we go to try again and tries count equals five which it is then it goes to exit sub and it's done so we now have five winners assigned here again these are not the real winners that was for testing purposes now one thing you'll note is that we can't actually sort these right now we have to do one final thing if we wanted to be able to sort a field like this um, I know I talked about you can sort the numeric, but we'll get into that in another video. I just want to talk to you how you can sort these weird columns that don't actually have a value. It does; it has an image in there, so it's like, how do I sort those? So let's teach Excel how we want to sort those really quick. Now in the documentation for XGrid, we can see that there is a sort type enumeration that allows us to sort different ways. We can sort something numeric, sort it by dates, sort with date times or times. We can even sort strings. But in our case, we're going to use another field called user data where you can actually put your custom data in the same field that has the image in a special slot called cell data. So we use the cell value to put the image tags and all that, but we can also use cell data for the same location and store some additional information that'll help it sort. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna say the grid one dot items. And instead of using the cell value, we're gonna use the dot cell data as we just read about. And we use the same item number with a handle of number H and then of course uh, still number two zero one two is the winner column but this time we're gonna put a value that's easy for it to sort by so we'll just put ones for the winner so it'll sort by ones and then empties that'll make it really easy for this case and then of course whenever we are loading up the other macro that loaded that information let's do something to the winner column so uh, in this case we're gonna take the columns uh, the column called winner and we're going to change the dot sort type and equals and this brings up the sort type enum or enumerations we're going to tell it that this entire column sorts by cell data not cell data that is a string type which is this one here but we're going to use cell data which takes it as numbers that are put in the cell data column and while we're at it honestly we can go ahead and just go ahead and do the vote one so it'll sort numeric so columns uh, let's take the one called vote and we're going to change the sort type of that one to sort it numerically that way we can sort by the 13 8 and 19 so let's go ahead and reload the results first of all and make sure this is sorting appropriately 19 13 and 8 and then 8, 13, and 19. Cool. And then we don't have the winners yet, but if we randomize it now, it's considering the cell data field for this to be the number 1, whereas these have blanks in them. So it'll actually sort that numerically. Whoops. So it looks like I needed to use a different type here. The sort type should be sort user data. Excuse me. Control Shift J. Let's change that to sort by user data and let's try that again so now we're going to hit randomize uh, load results randomize and now i should be able to sort by these yeah if i scroll up there's five results there and now they're at the bottom okay cool so let's look at the final results drum roll please i'm going to hit randomize and sort and here we are jennifer vincent eric steph and tracy are going to get a brand new 
free course from ExcelVBASFun.com. So thanks so much, you guys, for voting. I appreciate it. Uh, again, the majority of the votes were on 13, so it looks like everybody was pretty much in sync with what my wife had told me. Click on the link above your screen to download this project if you want to play around with this. And of course, you'll need to get the XGrid demo or go ahead and purchase it. So we'll have a link for that as well.